Welcome to the DaVinci Academy Histology video course. The entire video course is available on YouTube and covers all of the fundamental principles of histology and relevant cell biology. You can find all of the videos from the course by clicking the histology playlist link in the description below, and then you can access the corresponding practice questions and histology lab videos by going to our website, which is also linked in the description below. So for this third lecture of the cardiovascular system, we're going to focus on some clinical pearls, specifically atherosclerosis and aortic aneurysms. So atherosclerosis, also known as coronary artery disease, this can also apply to peripheral artery disease as well. It's the same pathological process, but we'll focus on atherosclerosis in the heart. So you have buildup of plaque within the arterial walls, and this leads to wall hardening and then subsequent narrowing of the blood vessels. So it, you know, it's a process. It takes time. It's not something that happens very short. That's why you see it typically in older individuals, because it just takes time. You have damage of the arterial wall and it eventually leads to hardening. And then obviously that narrows the vessel. And then that's what puts you at risk for developing clots in the arteries, such as a heart attack or a myocardial infarction. So how this occurs, the pathogenesis. So if we come down here, so this will represent the endothelial layer. So this is the endothelium. This would be the blood here, the lumen of the vessel here. You have the intima here. And then you have the smooth muscle cells within this region here. So this is the media. And so what happens is, is you have damage to the endothelium and that leads to macrophages to come into the intima or the tunica intima of the blood vessel and then begin engulfing tissue debris and cellular debris to essentially remember it's the cleanup crew they're coming in so you have damage to this vessel and just like when you have any other type of cellular or tissue damage you're going to have an inflammatory response or inflammation part of that is you have cells like macrophages that come into phagocytose again tissue and cellular debris the other thing that occurs is platelets will begin adhering to the damaged portion of the vessel. And again, that's to help repair the vessel. Now, part of platelets adhering, that's also going to trigger and contribute to inflammation. Now, what causes this endothelial damage? It's a number of things. You can have oxidized LDL or low density lipoprotein, which is essentially the bad cholesterol. So when we say someone has high cholesterol, that's what we mean is that they have high LDL cholesterol and so this is what forms those cholesterol plaques hypertension because if we draw the other side of the vessel here if you have high blood pressure remember this is a, a tube essentially so if you have high pressure in here it's going to be pressing over the wall so chronically over time if you keep pressing you know causing increased pressure against the wall that can lead to breakdown and damage of the of the vessel of the endothelium and then smoking has a lot of different chemicals in it that can break down or, or damage the the endothelium as well now what happens is, is these inflammatory cells is they stimulate hyperplasia of smooth muscle cells within the tunica media and then what happens is that you have growing of these cells or migration of them into the intima. So the hyperplasia, they, you know, they're expanding in size. They need somewhere to go. So they're going to go up towards the tunica intima. And I'll further explain this on the next slide. So again, we have our endothelium like this. And then what happens is that the smooth muscle cells, so this is the endothelium here, is the smooth muscle cells, is they migrate as well into this intima layer. And then you also have, we'll say, this is more 
you know, smooth muscle cells here, all of these within the media. And just for time's sake, I'm not going to draw in every single smooth muscle cell down here. This is to, again to illustrate this portion here that's migrating into the intima. So again, what happens is, is you have LDL that comes in and it's these, you know, collections of cholesterol like this, which then get engulfed by the macrophages. So M will engulf these. And these are what form foam cells, and they appear as fatty streaks on histology. And so the smooth muscle cells plus these foam cells release cytokines. that stimulate production of extracellular matrix components that form a fibrous cap over a necrotic center that contains cellular debris, cholesterol, and foam cells. And so what you have is, is that you have kind of this ECM matrix around here like this. Now, what can happen is, is that you have a rupture of this fibrous cap, so like right here, and this releases the contents of this necrotic center into the blood vessel lumen so this would be the lumen of the bus but this would just be the other side of the endothelium and so you have all these contents these foam cells this cholesterol all this other debris and what ends up happening is that they form a clot or a thrombus then you have platelets that adhere as well further further perpetuating that clot it's a platelet buildup and that's what gives you vessel occlusion, and then subsequent ischemia. And so the reason why patients with a heart attack or with peripheral artery disease will be given aspirin or Plavix, essentially antiplatelet medications, is to help prevent platelet formation on these clots. If they're coming in in the acute setting where they have a heart attack, they're also often given anticoagulation with drugs like heparin to help bust up this clot. And then obviously they can go undergo angioplasty where if you have a clot like this forming and you thread a wire with a balloon, with a catheter and balloon over it, then you inflate the balloon within the vessel to essentially blast out this clot. And then you leave what's called a stent over that, which is essentially this metal meshwork or, or uh, scaffolding that helps hold the vessel open after you've blasted out the clot with the balloon like this. The other option, obviously, is you could also do coronary artery bypass grafting surgery, which is where you'll have a clot like this, and then you'll f form an anastomosis or where you'll form a surgical connection between two vessels, and you'll take a vein and essentially bypass down. So you'll anastomose, you'll form a connection here proximal to the clot here so that flow, because it gets obstructed here, can then travel around it or bypass it. And then you sew distal to that. And then you have flow return and then it returns flow to the target tissue. So there's two ways. These days, usually they're treated by angioplasty and stents. When you would often do is when you have complex anatomy or if you have three or more vessels that have significant artery disease or clots in them, then you would go to more of the surgical route or the traditional route of treating coronary artery disease. Aortic aneurysms. So this is a pathological dilation of the aorta and it can occur any point along the aorta, but it most commonly is seen in the abdomen, also known as a triple A, an abdominal aortic aneurysm. So let's say you have your normal aorta like this. And so let's say you have your lumen here. We won't draw them all in. Let's just say this is the intima here, this line here, and then these are the you know media and adventitia. So this is normal. So then you'll have aneurysm where you have a dilation of that. So the wall becomes weakened at a certain point. You see a bulging of the aneurysm or the bul bulging of the vessel, and that is the aneurysm. So you can see the layers are all intact. You just have a weakened portion that has allowed it to expand out and bulge. Now, the difference there is then when you have a dissection, which is a life-threatening emergency, you have a breakdown in the intima. So you have a breakdown in this first layer, and that allows blood to leak into the tunica media layer. And so with that, what happens with that 
is that creates an abnormal dilation of the aorta and it actually creates what's called a true and a false lumen. So the true lumen is the true lumen of the vessel and then you have the false lumen which is where you have blood expanding into this media layer and since that layer is weaker you don't you know you have a breakdown of one of the layers oftentimes on imaging the false lumen appears larger than the true lumen because you have a breakdown and a weakness in this part of the wall and so you have blood collecting and then what ends up can happen is if you, this isn't treated is it can rupture and then you can just bleed out and obviously this is fatal very quickly if not treated and something I, I forgot to mention here is the major risk factors for both aneurysms and dissection is hypertension because again if you have elevated blood pressure just like in the artery in the smaller arteries in the coronary arteries if you're pressing against this that can you know obviously cause weakness in the wall and break down eventually smoking just like how it can damage the coronary vessels it can also damage the the aorta it's the same thing diabetes and hyperlipidemia thank you for watching this video from the da vinci academy histology video course which is completely available on youtube to access the corresponding practice questions and histology lab videos go to our website using the link in the description below.